what's up i'm back quick video on the heart again so it's, it's kind of like a part two for the cardiac anatomy i'm just going to go over blockages and the coronary artery so just like your heart supplies blood to the rest of your body it also supplies blood to itself so as soon as the blood leaves the heart through the aorta you have these vessels that leave the aorta like right after it leave, it exits the heart and those vessels feed the heart itself, feed the heart oxygen to keep the heart alive, to keep you alive, right? To keep it pumping. That's what matters here. So we're talking. So what I'm going to be talking about right now is specifically just on the vessels that go over your heart. All right, that's all I'm talking about right now. And I'm going to go over three things you need to know. Uh, the first one is coronary artery disease. The second one is acute coronary syndrome and MI which stands for myocardial infarction. Myocardial is tissue of the heart and infarction means death. So tissue so heart tissue death. There you go. Um so first off, what is what is coronary artery artery disease and how does it come to be? Well, C A D develops over time. For those people that you know, they just eat McDonald's all day, every day, don't care, YOLO, um, and they just start stacking on the big chickens or whatever. You start to build up plaque, so it's kind of fat, like uh, fatty stuff, fatty substance inside your vessel. So these right here are vessels, right? So plaque builds up right here, and it makes these vessels thicker. So when plaque builds up inside your vessels, your coronary arteries, that's going to constrict your vessels, all right? Um, so let's say that this person right here has been eating Mickey D's for like 25 years because it's America and let's go crazy. Who cares, right? Um, well, let's say that one day they're like, hey, you know what? I've been watching somebody work out, uh, P90X commercial. Like, I wonder what it feels like to work out. And then they go to the gym to go work out. What happens when you work out is that your vessels constrict. So if you're gonna constrict your vessels that are already that are already constricted because of the plaque, that's gonna restrict the blood flow that's going to where it needs to go, right? To any part of your heart. So if you're really, really, really constricting your vessels and really restricting your blood flow to a certain part of the heart. That means that O2 is not going to get, or not as much O2 is going to get to a certain part of the heart. And that causes angina. Angina is pain due to a lack of oxygen to a part of the heart. That's what angina is, right? Now, there's two types of angina. There's stable angina and there's unstable angina. This causes stable angina. Stable angina goes away. Unstable angina doesn't go away. All right? So... If this person relaxes, chills out, um, sits down, eventually everything's gonna relax. The vessels are gonna open up again, and blood flow will continue. And that's why it's called stable angina. Sorry, I got a message. Let me close it off. Awesome. So, stable angina caused by coronary artery disease, and I wrote it down right here too, so you kind of. Uh, see what it looks like how it's spelled might be spelled wrong I don't know <laughs> but that's what CAD is all about all right so this is not a big deal it, it sucks but people can live with it it's not a huge deal uh, tons of people have it and they're they're fine um, maybe changing your diet uh, your habits might help you long term but it's really hard to get rid of that plaque once it's there it's there for the most part now Let's go over acute coronary syndrome. Acute means sudden. It just happened, right? So it's just, it's acute. It's a sudden uh, thing that just occurred. So let's go ahead and pretend that this person had CAD. So they have CAD, right? And CAD really is... Um, it's caused by just fatty, a fatty substance that causes plaque on the inside of, of your your uh, your vessel, right? So that's what what's going on there. Now on the outside, the surface of the fatty 
it's hard, it's solidified, but the stuff inside is still kind of gushy and mooey and mushy or whatever, however you want to say it, so it's still gooey. Let's say for some reason that a, a part of the right here, you, you just had a, a real big bulge of plaque and it just got real big and it bursted, right? It bursted. What's going to happen is that uh, platelets are the sticky stuff. Platelets are the stuff in your blood that stick to wounds to heal and make a scab. That's what a platelet does. Well, a platelet is going to think that this is a wound inside your vessel and it's going to start to latch on and just build up. So now you got platelets that are going to start to build up, build up because they're trying to protect you. They're, they're trying to cover the wound for you to get better. It doesn't know any better. The platelets don't know any better. Platelets are dumb. They're just doing their job, right? Build up, build up, build up, build up. And this is a sudden, that this was just kind of brought up suddenly, so it's acute. And what an ACS does is that it's going to restrict the blood flow. So very little blood flow is going to get to where it needs to go because of this right here, the blockage, right? Um, so this could happen in many different ways. It could be from like a... A little piece of an embolism could be a little air bubble, um, some dirt. I don't know. Embolism means anything. Um, it could be anything. It could just kind of go on here, latch on, and restrict the blood flow. But this is just a better example because this can actually happen. A uh, CAD can turn into an ACS, and then an ACS can turn into an MI, and I'll go over that right now. Now, if there's very little blood going to where it needs to go, and this is getting worse and worse and worse, this is going to cause unstable angina because no matter what you do, if you relax, you sit down, that pain is not going to go away. Your patient is going to be in very, very, very bad pain. Um, and blood not getting to a certain part of the heart causes ischem ischemia, which is a lack of O2 on uh, a part of, of the heart. Now, let's go over what uh, MI is. So, if this continues to build up, build up, and build up, it's going to completely cut off circulation to let's say is this part of the heart right here because the clot is like right here so it's going to completely cut off circulation now if blood's not getting to this part of the heart that means oxygen is not getting to that part of the heart which means that it's going to die heart dies well first off cells die tissue dies organ dies your patient dies that's why that's a bad thing because our heart is not going to pump forever like that. Yeah, it's going to pump a little bit. It's not going to be effective. But if it continues, it gets bad. The heart is going to stop. Maybe cause dysrhythmias. Things like that. It's not good for business. So, and this is an MI. Also, so these are both going to be under unstable. Put on for unstable. Let me try it out. Unstable angina. This one is stable. Because... If your patient relaxes with CAD, the pain will go away. Angina means pain in the chest due to a lack of O2, oxygen to a part of the heart. This, these two right here, it doesn't matter what your patient does, um, the pain is gonna, is gonna stay there, it's gonna persist. Uh, this is why you need nitroglycerin and aspirin for your patient. Uh, and I might make a video on that, but I think I already made one, I'm not sure. Um, but if you have any questions on like, how nitroglycerin helps this out or aspirin helps uh, ACS or MI, I'll be more than happy to make one. Just leave a comment below. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, just wanted to go over CAD, ACS, and MI. And I hope you guys learned from this. And if you want more info, hit me up.